Hey, what up, what up, what up, what up, my people? I hope you're all doing well. Today, I'm going to be holding your hand all the way through making the Temple of Funk visualizer. Check this out. break this down into three parts. Part one is going to cover modeling and some shading. Part two is going to cover the particle system and some shading. And part three is all about adding some of that house with compositing. Uh, let me know if you guys want a longer video format instead of these segmented tutorials. Uh, I know personally I find it easier to digest if they're segmented and in parts, but if you guys prefer like one video that's an hour long, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to at least try one of those longer formats for you guys. Uh, if not, it's business as usual. I'll stick to the same format. And if you guys are ready, let's put in some work and finish this visualizer. All right, first thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm in EV and not cycles. So I'm just going to switch to that in my render tab. Viewport, I'm going to go 128 and render, I'm going to go 256. I find that those values work well with my hardware. I could go higher or lower. Uh, obviously, these values might not work for you depending on your rig. So, you know, do some experimentation and find what works best for you. Next, I'm going to just enable my screencast keys because for some reason it's never on when I want it to be on. And I'm going to go Shift A Mesh, bring in a UV sphere. I'm going to go W Smooth, and I'm going to go Control 2 to bring in a Subsurf modifier at two cuts. Next, I'm going to rename this Metal Sphere Mesh. And then I'm going to split my window in half. And I'm going to go into Rendered View. We're not going to see anything. And we're going to go Shift F3 a couple times on the top here to get to the Shader Editor. And then I'm going to go to the World tab. I'm going to right click on my background, hit Control T. And that's going to bring in a environment texture for me, mapping and a texture coordinate node. And if that doesn't work for you guys, make sure you enable Node Wrangler. So just go to your add-ons and your preferences and turn this Node Wrangler on. I pretty much use it in all of my tutorials. So if this isn't your first rodeo with me, you should be pretty comfortable with it. Next, go to the assets I provided for you guys. For me, that's Blender Archive, Cust, Tutorial, Temple of Funk, Tutorial Assets, and it's called Stars Sphere and just bring that in. Generally, you wouldn't use a JPEG for an environment texture. You'd want a .hdr or something else. Usually they're way bigger in file size, like hundreds of megs. Um, we're gonna try to increase the quality a little bit with this to kind of alleviate it of its detritusness, which is a new word I've officially invented, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Let's go Shift A, bring in a mix shader. Let's go Shift A, bring in a color ramp, which is going to isolate our stars pretty much. And let's go Shift A, bring in a emission shader. And I'm gonna connect that emission to the mix and I'm gonna take the color to the factor of the color ramp and I'm gonna go color to the factor of the mix shader. And now we're gonna see something like this. It looks like nothing happened, but we're gonna see a slight punch in the whites. And if I take this value up to say 10, it's gonna look super washed out and crazy. And you can really see the artifacting of the JPEG. But if we take the color ramp black value and bring that in a bit, it's essentially just gonna take our bigger white spots and just isolate those. So now if we go to our render tab here and click on bloom, we can really see that effect take place. So now if I crank these, you should see the brighter stars get even 
or the bigger stars get brighter while the smaller stars not so much. All right, let's just do something like 15. That's cool. We could take this one step further, but first I'm going to, of course, save. Let's go Temple of Funk part one and just spam that control S button as often as you can. I don't want you guys to lose your progress. And let's go to our sphere here. Let's go to the object and make sure we go to our material context here, go new. We're gonna go metal sphere as the mat. We're gonna take the metallic value up to one and we're gonna take the roughness value down to zero to get that cool effect. Well, that'd be pretty cool to animate actually. So just bring that to zero. You should get a completely reflective material. So if we go back to world, we could actually play with the reflection strength on our sphere, which I noticed was something I wanted to do when I first made this. So to do that, we can go mix shader and we can bring in a light path node and input is camera ray to the mix shader fact, fact, and then go grab all this shift D to duplicate it and connect this mix shader up to the bottom of that mix shader. And now if I take this value to zero, we're still getting all the reflection from this top component here. So what this is pretty much doing is saying, all this stuff we're doing here, I want it to affect my objects in the scene, but I don't wanna actually see it in my camera. My camera actually wants to see what's going on in here. So the best way I could show you this really is either cranking the strength and you can see our sphere is starting to get brighter because the stars up here are actually getting super, super bright. So if I even change this to like green, you can see that our reflections are now green, but the environment that we're actually seeing, nothing seems to have really changed. So here I could really play with, you know, the HDR value without compromising the, ref uh, the reflection strength I have on the metal sphere. So let's bring this down to maybe like 25 and let's make this white again. And yeah. Maybe this should go with 50. We could change these values, you know, obviously add your own flavor to it. You don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. I'm just kind of showing you methods and my process for doing the things that I do. All right, let's go into solid view. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go alt one and change this to wire. If that hotkey doesn't work for you, which it might not. Uh, I pretty much went to our object context here and uh, right here in viewport display, you'll have display as. So you could right click on that and set that up to be any shortcut that you want. I picked Alt-1. I learned that from Chip Walters. It's been pretty useful. I use it pretty much all the time when I'm modeling. So we have our metal sphere. I'm going to go to my front view, Shift-D to duplicate that. And I'm going to call this one the inner glow mesh. I'm going to hit S to scale that up slightly while holding shift. And I'm going to do that again, shift D. And I'm going to rename this one immediately to outer glow mesh. And I'm going to do the same thing S to scale, hold shift and just scale that up a little bit. Now incrementally, I'm just going to bring this in as textured metal sphere, textured inner glow textured. So these should all be textured. And I'm going to grab the metal sphere and the inner glow just in my hierarchy here. And then finally grab my outer glow. And I'm going to go control P set parent to object. And I usually just do keep transform and that works fine for me. So now if I grab the outermost mesh, it's just going to move everything with it, which is exactly what I want. Next, what we're going to do is our inner glow mesh. We're going to get rid of that material and our outer glow mesh. We're going to get rid of that material now on my outer glow mesh. I'm going to hit new, make a new material called this one outer glow. And let's go back to our object shader here. I'm going to get rid of this principal BSDF and I'm going to bring in a emission node. I'm going to bring in a layer weight node 
and I'm going to bring in a transparent BSDF. And I'm just going to make sure I can see all this stuff. And I'm going to hide our inner glow mesh because that's going to interfere with what I want to see. We're pretty much just doing some shader debugging. And let's go mix shader here. Let's go back to our rendered view. And we should see this because our outer glow has no material or it's black, but we still have our metal sphere inside. So essentially we're gonna try to do something to see that. So facing of the layer weight is gonna go into our factor of the mix shader. Our emission is going to go to the top slot and our transparent will go to the bottom and then connect that to our output. We should see something like this, which is what I expected. And let's go in and bring in a color ramp. And if I play with these values, nothing is happening yet. Uh, is it because our blend mode is not set correctly? Aha. So in your material context tab, make sure you go down to settings and set your blend mode to alpha blend so we could actually see the transparency take effect. If it's on opaque, none of this transparent BSDF will actually be factored into anything. So go alpha blend or alpha clip or hashed, but I, I usually just go alpha blend. It seems to work good for what we're doing here. All right. Now, if I play with this blend value, we see that, which is not what I want. Okay. This is the opposite effect of what I want going on. So let's just see what's going on here. Okay. So I just control shift clicked on my color ramp to kind of debug it. I just want this to really be on the outer fringes of our sphere here. So let's do something like that. Everything in black will be transparent. Everything in white will uh, reflect this emission. So we can increase this strength. Let's go like 20 and let's change this to something orangey yellow. Oh, that's way too bright. Bring that down. All right. Still not working quite how I wanted it to. Interestingly enough. Have I fudged it? I fudged it. Take take the uh, transparent BSDF to the top and put the emission at the bottom. And that's gonna give us exactly what we're looking for. So that was my bad. We're having some technical difficulties, but we figured it out. All right, so from here, you can play with the color ramp and the layer weight to get the desired effect that we want. I want something like this, maybe even a little bit more like that. And then we're gonna have our secondary glow just under that. So now I'm gonna to go to my inner glow and unhide that. And I'm going to bring in our outer glow material, hit that two button. So what, what's going on here is it's pretty much saying, hey, outer glow is being used by two different mesh objects right now. So if I click on that, it's going to be create a duplicate of that and apply it to the mesh that I currently have selected. So let's just go inner glow on this one. And what we can do is change this to red so we can see it. And now here I might just hide my metal sphere so it doesn't overcomplicate things. And what I'll do is I want this to start maybe like here instead of right now it's starting right on the edge where the other one is. So I think a way we can do that is hit this plus button. It's gonna bring in a second picker here. And I'm going to say that this should also be black. And let's just hide this outer glow too real quick. So this is black. Okay. So we might have to move all these down a little bit like this. Okay. Let's unhide our outer glow and let's see what we got. Okay. So what we've essentially done is we've isolated the white uh, component here. We've made a little Oreo and now 
I wish I could grab all three of them at the same time. But now we kind of have to find maybe a starting point like that. And yeah. So now this black value on the right side is dictating the start point of our inner glow. So I just want it to be inside the yellow just a little bit, maybe like something like that. And then let's bring the white up closer to that one and then bring this one here like such. And then maybe make this a lighter color, see what happens. Just adds a little bit more glow effect, yeah. So don't make the second one on the left fully black. Maybe let's lift that a little bit so it looks like there's some more glow. And let's bring back our metal sphere here and see what we got going. Cool. So we get a little bit of a uh, like red glow effect. Just the tiniest bit. And I kind of like that. So now we should have something that looks like this. So any angle we look at it from, it should look like it's just completely glowing. And we now have our sphere. If I grab it and just move that up, everything should still work perfectly and move together in unison. Okay, let's go mesh. Let's bring in a plane. I'm going to go S, scale that up 50. I'm going to go Control A and apply the scale. So it should be one to one, which it is, one, one, one. Next, I'm going to tab into edit mode, go W, subdivide, and I'm going to put the number of cuts to 99. So that means if I check in face mode, click on that side, control shift, right click there, and it's gonna pick the shortest path to that face. And if I look at the bottom right, we have a hundred faces. So a lot of the times you might be like, I want a hundred faces, but if you type in a hundred of cut, a hundred cuts, you're gonna get a hundred and one faces. So. Just pick one number lower than the amount that you actually want. Next, we're gonna go modifier, add modifier, and where is that wireframe? That pesky wireframe, there you are. Bring that in, increase the thickness a bit. I got mine up at about like 0 0.09 meters. And then go new material on that, and let's call this ground emission get rid of my principal bsdf bring in a emission node connect that to the output make this something bluish or whatever you want and let's hit that at like 20 go to our rendered wow that is bright let's make that like maybe five three make it a little bit lighter blue like we had in the first video. I'm just gonna take my camera. I'm going to hit Alt G to put that at the origin of our world. And I'm just gonna go rotation 90, zero, and I believe zero. And I'm gonna move that back in the Y, bring that up in the Z. I'm just gonna split my window real quick, hit Control zero to make that my active camera for my scene. I'm just gonna lower that down like such. And I'm going to go to my output context here and just make this one to one. So I'm just going 1920 by 1920. And now if I look in here, we have the beginnings of our temple of funk visualizer. Uh, obviously, all these values we can tweak. Feel free to make it your own. And that's going to end it for part one. Join me in part two where we're going to create the particle effect and do some additional shading and just make this look a little bit neater. All right, guys, I'll see you in part two.